Osasuna Barcelona looking to move up to third with a victory. They've temporarily perhaps dropped out of the Champions League spots, but three points this evening against Osasuna would move them back into the top four uh, positions. We've got Graham Hunter and Andrea Orlandi in the studio to build up to kick off, but let's take you back live to the camp now and speak to our touchline reporter, Jamie Easton, who's got the team news for us. Good evening, Jamie. Good evening, Phil, and Xavi Hernández does six changes regarding the last game Barcelona played here at the Camp Nou on Thursday against Galatasaray in the UEFA Europa League. Marc Ander Ter Stegen will be the goalkeeper, four defenders with Dani Alves on the right and Jordi Alba on the left, Piqué with his 600th appearances as a Barcelona player together with Eric Garcia as the centre-back. Araujo will start the game on the bench. Remember that Araujo and Eric Garcia are all two. One yellow card away from suspension. And the next game is El Clásico. Few midfielders with Sergio Busquets, Pedri and Gavi. And up front, we see Obi Mayank, Ferran Torres and Usman Dembele, who will start here at the Camp Nou for the first time since he didn't renew his... see what's the atmosphere from the local fans and let's take a look what Osasuna has prepared for us today here at the Camp Nou with Sergio Herrera as the goalkeeper for defenders Nacho Vidal on the right Cote on the left Juan Cruz and David Garcia the two centre-backs then we see Lucas Torro and Moncayola in the midfield with Javi Martinez playing in front of them and Ruben Garcia will play on the left Iker Benito a player that has only played 29 minutes this season in La Liga until today we'll play on the right and up front Kike Garcia very important absence for Arasate because Chimi Avila is sanctioned Thank you very much indeed, Jamie. All right, let's talk about those starting 11s here in the studio starting with the hosts with Barcelona Andrea, I want to ask you about Ronald Araujo being on the bench and Eric Garcia starting we had some comments from Xavi Hernandez in his pre-match press conference criticising Ronald Araujo's ability to bring the ball out from the back you don't necessarily agree? No, it was a bit unfair uh, from Xavi Hernandez I think that he's improving of course it's not his, his biggest uh, point his strength uh, but he's such a, a good defender and reliable on the ball as well he stood it against Elche he was basically targeted they marked PK so they let, they let him hand the ball and then press Barcelona but he did well uh, when he had the ball and I think that you know it's not a problem uh, for Ronald Araujo. Anyway, he's not starting. Obviously, he's, uh, he's one yellow shy of sus suspension. So I've got a new toy here. I'm going to show you the, the starting lineup of Barcelona. Yes. And that's the that's the uh, first big thing of, of the starting lineup. Where is Eddie going to be playing? Because normally when Dani Alves starts as a right back, Araujo is the one on the on the right because obviously he's quicker and stronger than Piqué. And normally Dani Alves likes to go forward, so there is a weakness uh, at the back of of the Brazilian fullback. Uh, Eddie Garcia doesn't have uh, the, f the fitness, the physical ability of Araujo, so I expect him to start on the left and Piqué on the right. Now, with this situation, we've got a problem because one of the main things that Piqué does playing on the left, so uh, we'll see, we'll put Eddie Garcia here, Piqué on the left, where he's been playing, is basically the diagonal balls to this man, Usman Dembele. Mm -hmm. Every time Piqué has the ball, this is a trigger uh, for Dembele to make the move in behind. So now, with Eric Garcia, let's see if Barcelona decides to do the same. Another big aspect of, of the starting lineup, uh, the three midfield. Obviously, Pedri is a specialist of keeping his position in between the lines, always in the right position. Gavi, who started as a left winger against Elche, will play in his natural position. And it's important that they keep uh, their positions there. Busquets, we will see this situation a lot of times. Dani Alves making it a two in midfield. What does create is a problem for Osasuna. Osasuna will have three players in midfield, probably marking man to man. With Dani Alves there, what, what are they going to do? Are they going to jump and press? Well, there's a line of pass for Pedri. When Dani Alves is there, Pique, you know, has the right ball straight to Ousmane Dembélé, so it goes straight where Barcelona wants the ball. They want to isolate Dembélé on 1v1 situations. On the other side, Ferran Torres will probably make more of these movements to, let space, to leave space for Jordi Alba. So... You know, it's an interesting lineup. Uh, Ferran Torres scored against Elche, did well, created chances for himself. But I think that the key is the position of these two players, Pedri and Gavi, and obviously Dembele in 1v1 situations. This is where you want him. OK, uh, let's go back to the uh, camp now and, and speak to Jamie Easton once more. Barcelona looking for a fourth consecutive La Liga victory, uh, Jamie. But in midweek, they were held to a goalless draw by Galatasaray, uh, which uh, wasn't the best result. It just sort of slowed down the euphoria which was building around this team. Mm. 
Exactly, Phil. It was quite disappointing for the local fans what happened in the Europa League last Thursday against Galatasaray because they were used in the last three La Liga games to see their team not only winning but scoring lots of goals. Ten goals scored, only two goals conceded and suddenly that streak stopped at the Europa League. We'll see what happens today because Barcelona really needs a victory as they know that Betis has won, Atletico Madrid have won and right now the Catalans aren't occupying Champions League position. Let's hear what Oscar Hernández, Xavi Hernández, assistant manager and brother, had to say ahead of this one. Osasuna are a side that can play in many different formations. They have a clear style of play, no matter what formation. They can play 5-3-2. Today it seems it's a 4-5-1, but we'll have to wait and see. They're a very intense side and very well drilled. Winning the ball quickly high up the pitch is key for us when we lose possession. We're used to attacking teams who sit deep and that's the best moment to press high up the pitch. If we don't do this properly, we concede counter-attacks and that's why our attackers and midfielders have to stay alert. Let's talk about the centre-backs again with Graham because I know it's, uh, it's a keen, uh, you're keen to talk about uh, that centre-back pairing of uh, Eric Garcia and Gerard Piquet and Araujo being on the bench. You're right and it was interesting listening to Andrea and his explanation. I think that in midweek, which you referred to back uh, with Jamie, against Galatasaray, I suspect that mm, you don't like Xavi's tone about Araujo and you explain why. I think he's also sp spoken a little bit with Fort Tongue. I don't think Araujo trained fully on Friday. I think it also took a bump against the Turks. We know he's going to be absolutely vital away in Istanbul and then in Madrid, the next two games. Xavi, one, is protecting him, two... now to speak to Jamie Easton again. Jamie, tonight's opponents, Osasuna, do not have now where they've conceded 36... That's true, but they perfectly remember a couple of seasons ago how they were capable of winning here at this same stadium, two goals to one, and that meant ending Barcelona's hopes to win that edition in La Liga. And in the last five games, Phil, Barcelona has only been able to win twice against Osasuna. In fact, when Osasuna plays away, they have better numbers. 20 points when playing far away from their stadium, 15 points achieved at their own stadium, and they have played... 13 games when not playing at El Sadar, when playing away, and they have only conceded 12 goals. And one of the big protagonists and one of the main reasons why this is happening is Sergio Herrera. What a season the goalkeeper of Osasuna is enjoying, and we were able to speak with him exclusively ahead of this one. You gain more experience every year. You gain confidence and the game becomes easier. I try to help the team, add my grain of salt to the mix, but it's a team effort. In the end, it is a team sport, and when I'm playing well, it's synonymous with the team playing well. And that's what makes Osasuna strong. We have a great squad with a lot of great players, a great coach, and in the end, whoever is on the pitch will play well, and that's very important. We know that Camp Nou is always a tough ground to play at, against a team that is right now playing very well. So I think this is a much more confident pass than the one we faced earlier in the season here at home. So it will be a very tough game, and we will have to play the perfect game to get anything out of it. Of course it matters if you lose. You always have to give your all when you're on the pitch. These types of games are always great fun to play in. It's always difficult to play against the big sides. But we have been playing well recently, like against Villarreal or Sevilla. 
We know we are competing well and we are motivated to play a great game at the Camp Nou. We will try to play a perfect game to get something out of the match. They've had some good results on the road this season, Osasuna. They've won at Villarreal, they've drawn at the Bernabeu and they only lost away to Atletico Madrid uh, thanks to an 87th minute goal uh, by uh, Felipe for, uh, for Atleti. Let's talk about the standing 11 for uh, Osasuna uh, with uh, Andrea. Once again, you've got the iPad. It all seemed to go pretty smoothly uh, last time on your iPad debut. So let's see if it can go equally smoothly when talking about Osasuna. OK, it, it looks like a 4-3-3 from Osasuna. Obviously, we said earlier that he was going to be he was going to play with three in midfield uh, to cope with uh, Barcelona power in that area and I think that this player here Javi Martinez is going to be crucial why exactly because Cote is a very good player on the ball very reliable going forward and this is where Osasuna can win and lose the game because the introduction of Coque plus Rubén García tells me that they want to attack down the left and, and obviously having Kike Kike is going to be mm. targeting probably Eric you know, at the back of the second centre back, and he's going to try to get at, at the end of crosses from Ruben and, and Cote on one side. But then on the other side, you've got Dembele to defend, plus Dani Alves, plus the runs of Pedri. So this man here, Javi Martinez, will have to do a lot of work up and down, doubling up and helping Coque in, in th those situations. Another big decision and uh, another surprising, uh, let's say, decision is the introduction of Iker Benito, the youngster. He's got 27 minutes in top flight, but he'll, he'll have one job. He'll have to follow Jordi Alba up and down. It, it's, even if it's 45 minutes, 60 minutes, I don't expect him to play the whole game. But what, it, what you have to do is just you know, cope with Alba defensively and help Nacho, Nacho Vidal on that side. Uh, might there be a bit of space behind Dani Alves for them to attack tonight? <laughs> there wasn't against uh, Elche. That's a gimme, isn't it? That's a seven-foot pot you just given me. Tapping space in. behind Dani <laughs> Alves. Otherwise, how would you get the genius? I remember interviewing him once and he said, uh, listen, I play for joy. Yeah, I play to win. And if I make mistakes, if I get caught out behind, I will continue to play this way. It's the Danny Alba's way. That was about 10 years. to square off with Crystal Palace play man
City. The Premier League on the one broadcaster that brings you unbeatable football. Stay connected. TV. I am calling you out, Steve Austin! At WrestleMania, Stone Cold is going to open up Hannah Whoopass on you, Kevin Owens. Expect the unexpected on Raw. Golden Gloves presents Heavyweight Mania live from Empress Palace. In the evening's main supporting bout, Joshua Pretorius will attempt to defone SA Heavyweight Champion John Rue. The main attraction sees former Cruiserweight World Champion Kevin Lorena make his heavyweight debut against hard-hitting Romanian Bogdan Dinu. Heavyweight Mania live on the 26th of March. Only on Supersport on DSTV. Proudly brought to you by Empress Palace and World Sports Betting. In life, we're all faced with those undoubtable no-brainer moments. Those unmissable opportunities that just make sense. Hey, Baba, what's up? Hey, Wena, do you need a look? Hey, what's up? Those simple choices that just make life lacquer. Beer, I buy. Get a risk-free first bet at Sporting Bet. If you lose, you get to have another go. If you win, you win. Sporting Bet, it's a no-brainer. All new Toyota Agya. Sleek styling, modern convenience, LED projector headlamps, alloy wheels, push start ignition, Wi Fi. Hang on, all of that's in there? Yeah, it's even got a service plan. Nice. The Toyota Agya. It's a big deal for a small car. We're gonna get it started. Do it. Do it for the culture. Do it because you can. Or because you can't. Or don't do it. But the band, the boy, work hard and dress. To flex or to relax. Jive a man. Dance like you're on the guest list. Drink. Drink it on the rocks. No ice. Just dollar. Or don't drink. Turn those expectations off. Stay true. Stay true to who you are because when you do, there's no wrong way. Valentine's. Stay true. Not for persons under the age of 18. Drink responsibly. Welcome to the Camp Nou, on your screens there, the president of the club, Football Club Barcelona that is, Jan Laporta, amongst the fans uh, celebrating with two of the club's successful teams, the basketball team who were presenting the second consecutive Copa del Rey to the fans and the women's football team, you can see them there who won the La Liga title this morning with a 5-0 victory over Real Madrid. So, jubilation for the home team fans. Congratulations to both those teams today. Football Club Barcelona take on Osasuna in the final game of Sunday's football from match day 28 in La Liga Santander. The players in the tunnel about to come out as the triumphant women's team have their photo taken. Of course, the uh, first team who we're about to watch take on Osasuna this time next week. They'll be coming out onto the pitch in the Santiago Bernabeu to take on La Liga leaders Real Madrid. How they would love to repeat the result of this morning's match from the women's first team. Barcelona going into this game in fifth place in the La Liga table. They were ninth when Xavi Hernandez took over. A win today would put them tie on points with Atletico Madrid in third place with a game in hand. And uh, just to 
let you know how tight things are at the top of La Liga. If they were to win that game in hand and win tonight, they'd be within two points of second place, Sevilla. As for Osasuna, well, they're a tough nut to crack, having a fabulous season. They're in 11th place in the uh, table. A win would see them overtake Valencia, move up into the top ten in ninth place. And they've been particularly dangerous on the road this season. Usually Osasuna aside, who were very, very strong in El Cedar. This season, six of their nine wins have come away from home. The game earlier this season in El Cedar finished in a 2-2 draw. It's going to be a very tight clash tonight as the Football Club Barcelona anthem rings around the Camp Nou. With me on comms for this one, Andrea Orlandi. Welcome, Andrea. Um, it's fair to say Barcelona, if they want the three points tonight, are going to be made to work hard for them. Absolutely. Good evening, Simon. Good evening, everyone. It's not going to be easy for Barcelona, and they know what they're coming up against. Uh, a really tough nut to crack, as you said, especially away from home this season, as we see the starting lineup. But Barcelona, not, they not only need to win to get back into the Champions League places, but also because they've got a huge week ahead of them with, obviously, the Europa League game away against Galatasaray and then Clásico coming after. So this game is a must-win game for Xavi Hernandez. Man. Well, there was the starting lineup for Barcelona, chosen by Xavi Hernandez. Ter Stegen in goal, Alves, Piquet, Garcia and Alba at the back, Busquets, Pedri, Gabi in midfield, Dembélé, Ferran Torres and Albama Yang up front. It's as many as six changes from the side which drew nil-nil on Thursday here in the Camp Nou in the Europa League against Galatasaray. Alves, Piquet, Busquets, Gabi, Dembélé, Albama Yang coming in to replace Dest, Araujo, Frenkie de Jong, Nico Depay, and uh, Dama Traore, the match referee today, De Burgos Bengochea, Iglesias Villanueva in the VAR operation room, and here's your Osasuna lineup, Sergio Herrera in goal at the back, Nacho Vidal, David Garcia, Juan Cruz, and Cote. Lucas Toro and John Moncayola uh, in central midfield with Javi Martinez. Ruben Garcia on the left, the 19-year-old Ica Benito making his full debut on the right, Kika Garcia through the middle. Two changes from the side, which got that fabulous victory over Villarreal in El Cedar on match day 27. Jamie Easton is pitch side. Jamie, we've just seen two Barcelona teams celebrating their trophy wins in front of the fans. Uh, Maybe a while before the fans get to celebrate a trophy win with uh, the team that's about to kick off tonight. Well, that's what the local fans are expecting, Simon, after that disappointing performance in the Europa League against Galatasaray. But everybody here is quite excited today because there's something that has happened this weekend. Sevilla wasn't able to win, so right now Barcelona depend on themselves to be second in La Liga. Absolutely true. It's a long way off at the moment, but uh, still looking to the objective as finishing as, as high up the table as they possibly can. Second would be a remarkable achievement for Xavi Hernandez after the tough, tough start to the season Barca have had. One or two technical problems for De Burgos and Bengochea ahead of kickoff. It's going to be Barcelona to start proceedings. They'll be attacking the goal to the right of your screens. Osasuna playing in green and, as we said, on the road They've been uh, very successful indeed under Hagoba Arrasati, who's just renewed this week his contract as manager of the club from Pamplona through to 2024. And uh, he's a really good fit in charge up at El Sadar, Andrea. Absolutely. Uh, you remember last season when Osasuna went through a bad patch where results weren't there. He, he was never under pressure because the club trusted him. And obviously they did well by trusting Jago Barrasate, you know, the way he's managing the team and his adaptability as well. He's, he tries different systems, different formations, but the team never loses their identity. And this season, as you said, they're now 11th with a chance to go top 10 in well, La Liga. They're doing absolutely great. Well, on the road, as we said, six wins have been uh, Cadiz, Alaves, Mallorca, Villarreal, who they beat away and at home, Granada, Rayo Vallecano. They got a nil-nil draw 
in the Bernabeu against Real Madrid, held Barcelona to a 2-2 draw. Are they going to go one down early on? Aubameyang cutting it back, it's well intercepted by Juan Cruz. Well, great movement from Aubameyang, obviously, David Garcia trying to anticipate, doesn't get there. Pedri was ready for the cutback, but Juan Cruz did, did ever so well. Well, those away wins, uh, the famous one was against Villarreal. The performance, it was absolutely incredible. I remember they played with five at the back, uh, when one of the first games that Juan Cruz played as a centre-back, obviously in a back three, uh, with that late goal from Echimi Avila to win the three points, and it was it was absolutely spectacular. It's true that then they kind of struggled and they, they had a deep in form, but now they're back to their best, Osasuna. And, Barcelona know if they want to win tonight, they have to be at the best. And for Osasuna, we're going to call it as a 4-5-1, a 4-4-1-1. It's uh, Kike Garcia, the veteran striker, up front, with perhaps Javi Martinez tucked in behind him. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it. A 4-4-1-1 with Javi Martinez, obviously, on Busquets mainly, trying to stop that line of pass. And the two midfielders, Moncayola on Gavi and, uh, and Lucas Torro on Pedri. Now, uh, obviously, it's going to be important uh, that this man here, now Dembele, who receives the ball, is, is, is doubled up by Rubén Garcia and Cote. Uh, because if he's isolated in one-to-one -one situations against Cote, we know how good he is on the ball, but defensively, he does tend to struggle a little bit. Alves with the cross, it's uh, completely missed uh, by young Benito. Alba picking out Busquets at a stretch. He finds Alves once again, assuming that position in uh, the centre of the park that we've seen when Barca have been on the ball and he's been at right back since his return. It's a good run from Ferran, gets to the byline, goes down. The uh, appeal for a penalty comes mainly from the fans. Referee De Burgos Bengochea was well positioned to see that. Let's have a look. There is a minimal contact, I think, here. Uh, but no, not enough. Ferran goes down, goes down too easily. But positive from him, obviously taking on Nacho Vidal, showing his pace. When he fears that he's lost uh, the ball, he just goes down. No, there's nothing. There's not even contact there. You know, from Nacho Vidal with Ferran Torres. Obviously, a, a good start from Ferran. He's had a, an up and down start to his Barcelona career. Obviously, he scored a very important goal away at Elche, but missed a few chances. Uh, good thing about him, he always puts himself into good positions. And talking about Dani Alves, it's very interesting what Barca does with him. Uh, you know, to play sometimes alongside Busquets to make it a midfield too when they, ha they have the ball. So the way that Osasuna is coping with it is interesting. Basically, they ask Kike uh, to drop deeper and mark Dani Alves. They're not, they're not forcing one of the midfielders to come out of their position because they know they can uh, leave some gaps at the back. So they just want to be very, very solid. They're defending as a unit in this opening few minutes. And we knew it was going to happen. You know, Osasuna is, is a difficult team to play against. And today we saw Araujo's one of the changes Xavi's made for this. He's on four yellow cards. I suppose the fact that the uh, Clasico in the Bernabeu takes place this time next week might have uh, some bearing on that decision made by the Barcelona manager. Uh, absolutely, 100%. It's true that Xavi has been... I wouldn't say he's criticised Araujo, but he said that on the ball there's, there's things he, he needs to improve. I think it was a bit unfair from the manager, from the Barca manager, because Araujo, OK, he's not PK on the ball, but he's a very good and reliable footballer. But uh, his main strength is defensively is the best defender they've got, basically. So I obviously expect him to start against Galatasaray midweek and, and against Real Madrid in a Clásico, 100%. It's Pedri combining with Dembélé. Dembélé squeezing inside to Busquets, who looked for the movement Pedri had made into the box, but it was intercepted. And Simon, Andrea, no whistles today for Usman Dembélé. This has changed. Xavi looks pleased with that. We all remember what happened the last game they played here against Athletic Club, when he was whistled and then he scored a wonderful goal. True. It uh, seems he's won the hearts and minds of the Barca fans. Here he is on the ball again, fairly active in these opening moments. Garcia wins a foul. Big, traditional, strong target man. 
And he's got real ability too, Andrea, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a good footballer. I played against him during his time in England, and it was it was very hard to cope with. Strong, but as you said, he, he knows what to do when he's got the ball between his feet. Obviously, his main asset is, uh, you know, very good in the aerial duels, very good in the air. And, uh, and obviously, it's, it's so difficult for a defender to play against a striker like him because he never stops running, he doesn't give up, he does press you, he upsets you. And, you know, a fantastic player for Osasuna. I think that he fits perfectly at, at Osasuna. Dembele, the control is poor. He may well have been offside, but uh, play was allowed to continue. Um, but but disappointing from Dembele it because. It was, wasn't it? Because yeah. the flag hasn't gone up. Exactly, and, and the ball from Alba was, was spectacular. Obviously, his first touch let him down, but that was a great chance. A risky one for Osasuna. I thought the defensive line was quite high. You don't want to be doing that against the pace of Usman Dembele, Ferran Torres, and Abomeyang. Dani Alves to take the resulting corner. It's headed clear only as far as Pedri. Alaba tries a shot, blocked by Juan Cruz. Eric Garcia finding Alves, now Dembélé again. Back to Alves. Cross into the far post. It's well cleared by David Garcia. Well, what Osasuna is doing when Dembélé receives the ball, obviously, Cote is the first one to go there and press. Ruben Garcia is helping him massively, and then Lucas Torro is the one shifting across and, uh, and making Moncayola attacking Iker Benito as well. So they're not using Javi Martinez in that department, they're actually using the holding midfielder to help on that side. That will be a goal kick. It's been a lively start from Barcelona, as you'd expect in the opening minutes of this game, then to take the initiative. Many of our Spectators, I know, are big fans of Osasuna's Argentine striker Jimmy Avila. He's uh, suspended for this game. He saw a red card in that win against Villarreal last uh, weekend. Actually, a big miss for them. Yeah. Uh, Simon he scored a spectacular goal against Villarreal. That header, when he was playing, probably where he doesn't want to be playing. You know, out wide on the right, he did start as a striker in the first half in a 4 4 2 formation alongside Kike. Yagoba went back to the 4 5 1 formation that was. Know, being effective for Osasuna. Alves a risky in trouble one. there. Cotton sending it forward where Kiki Garcia fails to control it. Alves, I uh, believe, apologizing there for that momentary lapse of concentration. They do take risks with Alves playing in midfield, yeah. uh, but it's something that they know they take into consideration. What happened was that that transition from Busquets was perfect. And then Kiki obviously couldn't control the ball, but you know they they kind of improving Barcelona in that defensive transition. Simon, that was the the main uh, problem, especially at the beginning of the season. Kiki Garcia with a blast off uh, Pedri, it rebounded nicely. Problems for Eric Garcia, being put under pressure there by Javi Martinez, but manages to find a way back. Important for his Ter confidence Stegen. as well, Simon. No, yeah. He knows he's lost his, his place with uh, with Araujo, so these minutes are, are crucial for him. And you know, for the rest of the season, Xavi's going to need everyone. When you're tempted to say Eric Garcia is the, the perfect Barcelona style ball playing centre back, really, but uh, here's Dembele, drags it wide with the left foot on this occasion. Applause ringing round the camp, no. It's the second time that Osasuna take risks in that first, you know, build-up. They don't, they don't want to get rid of the ball. They try to play there. Juan Cruz, it's a bad ball. And then you've got poor Cote in a 1v1 against Dembélé. You don't know what to do, yeah, really. Exactly. Show him inside, outside. And he takes the shot with his, with his left foot. Great chance for Barca. It's been a promising opening 10 minutes for Xavi's side. It's Dembélé. Now Alves, Pedri outside him. Now Bayang in the middle, Gavi arriving too. It's not the greatest of crosses, it's cleared by Juan Cruz. You can see that wins it, sorry. You can see that Pedri received the ball, but he was, I mean, he was hesitating a little bit. He didn't really want 
do anything with it or sprint with the ball. He was, he was waiting for help and ended up making the wrong decision. Dembele again, seeing loads of the ball in the opening minutes. Garcia to Piquet. Aubameyang back to Busquets, who picks out Dembele in a bit of space. Cotty goes across and uh, gets in between Dembele and the ball. Well defended, yeah. goal kick. He's done really well. I was I was having a look at Gabi and Pedri and how they were trying to, to maintain their position. Gabi, you know, made eye connection with the, with Obama Young. They made the, the right movement, Abama Young coming deeper. Gabi running in behind, but the work from Nacho Vidal, spectacular. I think that Osasuna, they just have it perfectly. They've, they've been studying Barcelona and they know exactly what to do and obviously how they can stop them. You know, those movements from midfield are crucial for, for Barca and Xavi's system and so far so good for Osasuna. Ruben Garcia losing his uh, footing and apologising to his teammates. A huge advantage, of course, for Osasuna is they've got off to such a fabulous start riding around mid-table. Um, that they've got absolutely nothing to lose tonight. If they lose to Barcelona in the Camp Nou, well, that's uh, to be expected, I suppose you could say. Yeah, it's well collected by Sergio Herrera. Oh, He's given a penalty. David Garcia and Herrera asking for explanations. There's a yellow card being brandished. Gavi congratulated by his teammates. I want to see it again, Simon, but it, it happened like two minutes ago and Nacho Vidal was perfect following uh, Gavi. Uh, this time it was a little bit late. Yeah. Let's see if there's there's a challenge. It's not too convincing that. But look at that. Dion, Lovely Obama ball Young, Busquets. Yeah, Obama Young comes deep. Uh, layoff to Busquets. The ball is just brilliant. And yeah, just well, catches his left yeah. heel as well. I mean. Well, it's one that uh, you can give or, or not as a referee, but uh, certainly if you've given it, I don't expect VAR no. to uh, to make any amendments to it. Um, is that one yellow or two yellows that have been brandished, Jamie? I only saw one yellow okay. appearing from... The that was a repetition team. in that case. It's going to be for Dan Torres to step up. Opportunity to put Barcelona... 1-0 to the good, 13 minutes into this game. And this would be just the kind of start Xavi will have hoped for. If, of course, he puts it away. And it does very, very calmly indeed. Side-footing it into the... Uh, just inside the right post as he looks at it, sending Herrera the wrong way. Barcelona take the lead. Ferran Torres with the goal. 13, nearly 14 minutes on the clock. Barcelona won. Osasuna nil. Important for him. Simon obviously came on against Elche at half time. Did really well. Scored once, but he, he did miss a few chances. Well, there is a penalty. He takes a responsibility. Look at that. I mean, you cannot hit a ball better than that. He's a specialist from the penalty spot, 1-0 Barca, and you see, you, you lose concentration for a half second yeah. against this team, and they punish you. The run, the movement from Aubameyang, Gavi was absolutely perfect. Nacho Vidal, he was just half a second late. You could see the penalty. Now you've got a big mountain to climb. I let Gav know. And Jamie, that's an important goal, isn't it, uh, for Ferran Torres? Second consecutive goal in uh, La Liga, and one thing they were saying here in Barcelona, Simon, inside the club, was Ferran Torres, won he starts scoring, the goals will just keep arriving, because he's doing everything good, but only scoring was missing. Well, he's involved again, as he's brought down there. It's a free kick to Barcelona, another yellow card, this time for David Garcia, the captain. So the... Right-hand side yeah. of the Osasuna defence, already on yellow cards, quarter of an hour into the game. And, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, Dembele he hasn't really activated himself yet, he's had a chance, but then you've got David, uh, David Garcia and, and Nacho Vidal on a yellow, and you've got Ferran on fire, Alba will be moving forward on that side, so no good news for Osasuna's defence. It's going to be Dani Alves with the delivery. He's going to try 
an emulator, Roberto Carlos. No, he plays it short, it's clipped over the top. Oh, that was, that <laughs> was well nice. worked. That was brilliant. But just didn't quite come off. Chavi clearly enjoying it. Look at Busquets, obviously, they're blocking. I think it's Iker Benito. You know, well drilled from Barcelona. Long goal kick from Herrera. Kike Garcia did what Kike Garcia does. Look at Dembele chasing there, what a sprint. Uh, he must have known Cote wasn't going to get it. I think Cote himself knew that he wasn't going to reach that one. But uh, Dembele putting in uh, just a little burst of pace there. I think that this is this is like uh, you know the the mental game in football. Uh, you know you were five yards ahead of me and I still beat you. Yeah. Even though I knew you were you were not going to get there. And the next time I'm going to have the ball, I'll be running at you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Barcelona have got a tough week ahead with that uh, trip to Turkey to take on Galatasaray. Having found them impossible to break down midweek here in the Camp No, so it's a game that they have to take very seriously indeed, and then just three days later, the Clasico against Real Madrid in the Bernabeu, and a game that not just Xavi and President Laporta, but uh, all the players and all the fans are going to be absolutely desperate to see a good performance from Barcelona. Absolutely, Simon, because they they have been outplayed by Real Madrid recently. Uh, it's true that in the Spanish Super Cup the performance was good, but still you, it's a good you lost. In. Oh, what a ball in! Now Yang on the volley did well to get uh, on the end of it, but Sergio Herrera was well positioned to collect. Lovely little touch there from Dembélé. Pedri squares it to Gavi. He thought about a shot, I think. Now chooses a better option. Dembélé back inside to Busquets. Busquets over the top again. And Pedri apologises as though he saw it too late. But yeah. uh, the idea... Look at this ball, Simon. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just perfect, because you're running straight. I mean, and to kind of scoop the ball this way takes a lot of quality. Aubameyang probably thought the goalkeeper was closer as we see the penalty there. And that's a training drill as well, because the movement was, was absolutely perfect. The ball from Busquets, it was great, you can see. I'll be happy with the finish there. And it'll be particularly happy that it's Fernand Torres scoring, as Jamie pointed out. To throw into Barcelona, Jordi Alba to put the ball back in play. Eric Garcia. Play allowed to continue there. Seemed like there was some shirt tugging. I think the referee decided it was mutual. Herrera punts it out. And you can see Simon that now Barca they're playing slightly more direct in terms of when Eric has the ball, he looks for Obama Young. So whereas before uh, they would try to earn yards through combination, but short combinations, you can see now Eric finds the winger straight away or finds the striker. You know straight away, so it's there's a difference compared to the Kuman days. Well, unfortunately for Barcelona, that one was broken down. Lucas Toro lost his balance, but also soon to maintain possession. Moncayola Lee playing it out, combining with Benny Dirk. The cross comes in, and that's just about the first time Ter Stegen has been called into action. How difficult it is to, to play for teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona. <laughs> you dominate the entire game for a goalkeeper, I mean. Yeah. You gotta be focused because obviously anything can happen in football and especially in such a competitive league like, like La Liga, of course. Busquets back to Gerard Piquet, now Alba. Uh, Alves, sorry, about Alves returning it to Dembele. Close down there by Conte and Ruben Garcia, but it's through to Dembele once more. 
Shimmy Shammy, it's a Brilliant. lovely, gorgeous ball in, and Brilliant. it's 2 0. And Ferran doing exactly what Jamie Easton warned us he was going to do. Once he starts scoring, he's not going to stop. And he's made it 2 0 to Barcelona. Five minutes after putting them ahead from the penalty spot. And that was a wonderful through ball from Usman Dembele, and the finish was pretty special too. Fantastic, and it all starts from the right, Simon, and Osasuna struggling, especially the two in midfield, uh, because Pedri joins Alves, Dembele, so Moncayora and Lucas Torro are always out of position, Dembele drives inside, the ball is just perfect, you know, at the back of Nacho Vidal, there's no way, you know, that Ferran Torres can miss from there, he does ever so well, obviously he's confident, he's, he's already scored, look at this. And he's got time to set, to, to trap the ball, control it, set it up, wait to see, what Sergio Herrera's plans are before coolly sliding it underneath the keeper's body. Uh, not too dif different the finish from the penalty he's just scored with the inside of his right boot again. Absolutely, but that's confident, Simon. Uh, probably, maybe against Elche, let's say, when he came on, uh, he would have missed it. Uh, but obviously, after scoring, after the good start he had today, uh, you know, you could see the composure. The first touch was the right one. He looks up, he sees where Sergio Herrera is, and he goes through his legs. 2-0 Barca, uh, but obviously the combination was just spectacular. Down the right, and the pass from Dembele. Well, the task has just got somewhat more uphill for Osasuna. Alves on the ball, he's Gavi. Showed strength there. Looking to link with Ferran Torres. Busquets over the top. Oh, wow. Lovely volley pass from him. And that was so close. To being a hat trick in the first quarter of the game, and uh, Jamie, the home fans are really enjoying this spectacle, aren't they? Absolutely, Simon and Xavi Hernandez, especially too. I saw him really, really happy after that goal because these are two players he needed to recover. Ferran Torres and also, especially Usman Dembélé, six assists of the season by the Frenchman. Only Jordi Alba has more, seven. Well, it's. Uh... Dembélé on the ball after the short corner taken by Pedri, does well, gets the cross in, Van Cruz heads away, but the danger's still there for Osasuna. Although this one goes out for a throw-in, Gabi will take it. Well, it took this man ten minutes to get into the rhythm of the game, but now he's, he's just unstoppable. Usman Dembélé, as we, we saw the chance from Ferran Torres, the pass from Busquets, a volley, Volleyed with his with his left foot. Yeah, it was a gorgeous touch. Yeah. Unbelievable. The awareness of, of Busquets is just spectacular. What a player. It's not only seeing the pass, it's it's, it's the execution exactly, because yeah. he killed the pace of it as well, even though it was volleyed. Fabulous from Busquets, who now picks out Jura Piquet. To the old guard, if you like, in Chavis Barcelona. There's another of them. Jordi Alba floats it over the top to Ferran again. Appeals for handball against the former Valencia man, Busquets. Well, he could uh, almost say telegraph that. You could see what was going through his mind. I think he'll have a shot with 2 0 up. He was kind of forced to yeah. have a shot. Uh, it's not his game. He doesn't really like to be doing it, but why not sometimes? problems for Osasuna now as it's all Barcelona they find themselves really pegged back there's Alba you can see that the position of Alba has changed as well Simon yeah where before it was it was crucial for Barcelona, his runs. You know, he was one of the few players that could make those runs in behind, give them width and depth. Now he's just keeping a more central position because he, he knows he's got a specialist there to make a difference in the likes of Ferran Torres. So. As you can see, he's uh, right on the line on that uh, left wing. Dembélé on the right. It's the kind of width that uh, Chani wants from his wide men is Busquets. Dembélé. Pedri, lovely ball to Alves, Dembélé on the back of it, it's uh, blocked in the end. Problems here for Cote. 
they're loving it down the right at Barca. It's true that Ferran has scored two goals and he's playing on the left, but they're destroying Osasuna here. Javi Martinez dispossessed. Pedri tries the shot. It's blocked by Aubameyang. Yang. And just a slightly heavy touch from Jordi Alba, but once again, applause ringing around the camp. No. This man is full of confidence. He tried the Rabona across there. Usman Dembele. Long clearance from Herrera. This time, Garcia didn't get on the end of it, but he almost wins the rebound, losing out in the end to Gavi. And, and I'm surprised, Simon, that you know Yagoba keeps that 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1 shape. Because you can see that Javi Martinez should be there helping. Look at Dani Alves receiving on his own. Lucas Toro is forced to go there. And, and look at Dembele in the space he's in. A little bit of showboating there, perhaps, from Dani Alves. Dembele with a cross! Oh, wow. And it's Aubameyang Yang who makes it 3-0. And that is sheer quality from Dembele. How many assists was it, Jamie Easton, for Usman Dembele? There's one more now. It was six, now is his seventh assist, and he equalizes Jordi Alba as the top assist player in Barcelona this season in La Liga. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang making it 3-0 to Barcelona on 26 minutes, doing a little dance with Dani Alves. How many times have we seen that over the years from the Brazilian? Just look at the quality of the delivery from Ousmane Dembélé. And for a striker, that's a bread and butter finish. It's not easy, still had work to do. Absolutely. The movement from Obama Yang is great, but you know, Dembele, he can take you on, but he doesn't need to if he if he can cross the ball with both feet. But I think the Barcelona they're destroying Osasuna on the right hand side. Uh, you know, Cote, you know, he, he was on his own there against Usman Dembele. Ruben Garcia has tried to help him in the opening minutes, but you know, I was gonna say that I'm surprised that Jagoba keeps that shape. Because obviously in a 4-5-1, Javi Martinez could actually help the midfielders yeah. you know, to stop Barcelona. It's, it's kind of strange what he's going for. And, and Barca setting them apart here. I think Alves, Pedri and, and Dembele, they're controlling the game. Good advantage played there by the referee. It's Dembele again. Very nearly linking up with Alves. Just flicked back by Javi Martinez. It's Martinez again, wide to Ica Benito. On the edge of the box, good work. Oh, and there's the offside flag, but it's the first chance, if you like, for the visitors. There you can see Moncayola just offside. Yep. But, but at least getting a shot off. Yeah, exactly. At least getting, you know, into, into the opposite half and creating some sort of problems to Barca, but... Still Barcelona coming again for Torres. Gavi offering support. He wins a throw. Unable to get past Nacho Vidal. If you look at the body language from Osasuna players, everyone looking at each other. What, what should we do? In, what, should, what should we do really to stop Barca? You know, they don't really know what to do, how to do it. Jordi Alba with the throw. Gaffi back to Eric Garcia. Gaffi again. It's time to select Gerard Piquet as the recipient. Side to Ferran Torres. Nearly linking up again. Oh, and Gavi wow. wins it back, and it should be four. Aubameyang just scooping it wide. Well, but it was an offside. offside but, uh, it, comes from a, it came from an Osasuna player, so. There's the 360 degree view of the opening goal for Antonio's penalty brought to you by Live Score. And that's Pedri with excellent anticipation. Finding Dembele. A lovely reception of the ball there from Pedri. Alba. And here's Fernand Torres. No wonder those Osasuna players look a little bewildered. It's a good block on this occasion by Garcia. 
again, a run from Pedri into the box. The pass was really good from Ferran Torres. And, and they have the ball again. You know, Sasuna can get out of there. They can't really you know, have a sequence of passes where they can, they can get a breathe on, really, Simon, because oh, you know, I mean, they're constantly it, under pressure. It, it, it's all one-way traffic, that's for sure. But they win a free kick, Sergio Busquets. Bringing down young Ica Benito. And he played a handful of minutes ahead of being selected to start tonight's game. He played against uh, Celta and against Sevilla, coming off the bench earlier this season. That's a bit of a baptism of fire from out there tonight. Chase for Cotti. Keeps it in play. Alvis is with him. Played back by Martinez. Moncoyola's attempted pass to Benito is blocked. And the ball rolling gently through to Mark Andre Ter Stegen. I think that probably Jagoba prepared the game uh, to attack Dani Alves. So that's why Cote is playing alongside Ruben Garcia. But he probably knew as well that he could lose the game there. And uh, this is exactly what's happening in the opening minutes. For the first time, Cote has been able to run at Dani Alves. Nothing's come out of it, but you know, that was probably Osasuna's idea of, of hurting Barcelona today. Juan Cruz playing the ball out. Garcia finding Garcia. Loose ball. Alves to Pedri, Dembélé to Busquets. And, uh, well, you can tell how much the fans enjoy that short, sharp, first-touch passing movement. The thing is that you train that, Simon, and uh, and it comes out naturally then on the pitch, uh, because you find those lines of passes, there's triangles where, you know, everyone is well-positioned, and obviously the quality does the rest. Dembélé. Side to Alba, Pedri, Busquets. Dembélé, can't get there. And Cruz wins a throw-in. I, I love to see Busquets, he just gives one bad ball, uh, you know, away per, per, per half, really, and he's just so frustrated with himself. And Dembélé was gesticulating there after that one had gone out for a throw. Not quite sure who to as Moncoyola with a good ball. And here's an opportunity. And Kike Garcia looks rather scathingly at the youngster Benito, as if to say, look, <laughs> I'm the veteran here. You square that to me, he was in a lot of space. But I think uh, Ica Benito probably took the right decision, just unfortunately for him, he lost his footing. Yeah, obviously, he's had to run a lot in, the, in this opening 33 minutes. Once he had a chance to, to go at Jordi Alba, he went for it, obviously, on his weaker left foot. But I tell you, when you're, when you're young, and you know, and you're playing alongside experienced players like Kike, it's, it's always a good idea to, <laughs> to give him the ball. Jordi Alba picks out Gerard Piquet. Pedri. Back from Busquets, finds Eddie Garcia. Alba again. It's Ferran. Alves. Now to Dembele. Gets the return from Pedri. Alves. again oh that's an audacious ball what a ball that is and it could so easily have ended up as a Juan Cruz own goal because he had to go there knowing that Dembélé was lurking it's true that obviously Osasuna defending too deep there and you know the say that was was yeah but they kind of forced to do it and the quality that you need to, to put that ball where, where Dembélé did is is crazy but we know how good it is. And uh, gaining in confidence all the time. 
Yeah, I mean, although he never really looks lacking in confidence, you have no, to say. But, but, it, but it looks but more it involved. Must help him. Yeah, yeah, and he looks more involved in what Barcelona are trying to do. It looks like I don't know. He's he's a different player. Well, battling to hold on to possession, failing to do so, but winning a throw in for Barcelona, which Alves will take. Garcia finds Jordi Alba. Alba looking for the connection with Fernand Torres, it's headed clear. But again, you see a long ball from Jordi Alba and looking for the run of Pedri. Uh, the midfielders, when they get the ball, they look to the other side and switch play. So they're not scared of do, doing that. Look at this. Push gets over the top to Dembele and he failed to bring it down. And for a moment there, Osasuna, having lost possession in the Barca half, were caught flat-footed. Busquets was well aware of that, of course. As we see, the second goal, just a 10.3% goal probability of Ferran sticking that one away. Which just goes to show, I think, how difficult that chance was. He made it look really easy, though, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. But obviously, you know some, when you go 1v1 against the goalkeeper, that obviously in order to make himself bigger, they tend to open their legs, but you need to be, you know, spot on at choosing the right time to, to obviously finish, and this is exactly what Ferran did. As, as we see Barca being, you know, more like the Barca we saw with Luis Enrique at times, you know, when, when they get the ball back, the quick in transitions, they do play those long balls, they're more direct, you know, with the pace they've got up front. So when they have to combine, they do, but they don't overplay. Cotter can't see a way forward, plays it back to Herrera. David Garcia, it's out Nacho Vidal. Here on the sideline, Xavi Hernández is continuously giving instructions to his players, clapping his hands. On the other hand, Arrasate is not even moving, hands in his pockets, looking down. It's quite disappointing performance for his side at the moment. Well. 3-0 down and have been since before the half hour mark so I think quite disappointing is an understatement really here's Moncayola now Cotti and uh, Lucas Toro just managing to keep hold of that Moncayola plays it back to Herrera under pressure from Alabama Yang finds Garcia Now, now it's Barca, you know, letting Osasuna play a little bit. It's about game management. Well, Busquets winning that one back, but uh, with a foul on Ruben Garcia in the process. Free kick to Osasuna. Just raising the boot slightly there. Not too much in it. And there's the gesture of Jago Barasati that Jamie was describing <laughs> looking like a stern school teacher which of course he is <laughs> Sergio Herrera with the clearance well the flag stayed down but now goes up there's nothing nothing's working for us as soon and I think that the, the main problem is when they don't have the ball which is most of the time yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you can see Ruben Garcia just drifting narrowly offside, not a lot in it. You know, but you can see that, yes, Iker Benito is kind of forced to make it a back five. Uh, but in midfield, there, they do have a problem. Gerard Piquet. And also unusual to see that Barcelona have covered more ground than Osasuna, although there wasn't much in it. I expect. Osasuna side playing here to be leading on that start, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. But Especially not having had the ball much. The thing is that Barcelona are uh, running while they're enjoying themselves. True. It's Dembélé. Supported outside in by Alves. Instead, picks up Piquet. Dembélé again. Must be feeling important tonight because... 
Everything's going through him, isn't it? Yeah. That's Pedri. I think that, you know, Jagoa thought he, he could win the game down the left. Uh, well, Xavi thought the same with his right side. Oh, Pedri cuts it back superbly. And for them, unleashes one. Off target, just too high. Nobody's going to complain too much about him electing to shoot from there. No, 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 no not in the sort of form he's, he's on tonight. I'm surprised to see Barcelona have uh, apparently made more attacks down the left than down the right. It doesn't feel that way, does it? Yeah, obviously, uh, they probably count the finish from, from Ferran, but it all started down the right, down the right with Dembele, Pedri and, and Dani Alves. Uh, you know, Dembele playing the through ball uh, to Ferran, but... Uh, you know, it's true that they kind of attracting Osasuna on this right hand side and, and then try and surprise on the other side. So, as a minute ago, we saw the first run from Jordi Alba and Busquets decided not to give him the ball. But, you know, it's, it's good when you when you reach a point in your career and Alba now is, is so experienced that he can't, can't really manage himself. You know, in this first half, he doesn't need to be running that much because yeah. Ferran is doing the job. You know, as, as the game goes on, in the second 45 minutes, we'll, we'll probably see more in attack. Well, just as you were saying that, we saw that run from Ferran cutting inside from the left flank. Ferran's, uh, Ferran's runs and, and movements are, are great, Simon. Uh, you know, he's, he's not a striker, he's not a number nine, of course, but he's not a typical winger either. Yeah. You know, he, he always makes the run, right runs, he always finds himself into good positions and uh, he's got goals in him, so that's his biggest advantage with uh, with Adama, for example. Well, here he is once more. Plays it back to Eric Garcia, now Alba. Busquets. And a lovely touch from Pedri. And again, Ferran was in the box, yeah. you know, starting from the left, but, you know, first touch football, difficult to defend. It was well defended in the end, and here's Benito takes a tumble, play allowed to continue, he's quick to get back to his feet as Eric Garcia squares it to Gerard Piquet. Now Busquets, Alba, Gavi picking out, Alabama Yang gets into the area, step over, cuts it back square. <laughs> Pedri. Pedri is an unbelievable footballer. He is. Didn't quite come off from him on that occasion. But you can see that he is a great passer of the ball, even yeah. in the box, just trying to give back to, to Aubameyang, as we see Alba's goal. You know, the cross from Dembele, the movement for Aubameyang. This is what a number nine should do, always go to the near post. Sergio Herrera with the long clearance, just over a minute and a half to go of what, uh, for us, as soon seem like a form of purgatory in the first half because they know they've got another 45 minutes to come <laughs> after the break yeah and sometimes you go at half time thinking well it can't get any worse than that well i wouldn't be too sure <laughs> seeing the way barca is playing tonight gerard piquet on the ball alba Busquets. And there's that one pass that you uh, allowed him to misplace per half. Yep. There, there's long clearance. Piquet underneath it. Martinez complaining that he was pushed from behind. Gerard Piquet disagrees with the decision. back to Nacho Vidal, it's Garcia. Juan Cruz to Cote, Dembele blocking his progress, Cote again. And Barcelona win it back, a lovely back healer from Dembele to Busquets. Jordi Alba, Dembele, now Pedri. Jordi Alba. Gavi. Now it looks like if Ruben Garcia has gone in midfield and, and Javi Martinez yeah. keeps his position up front, like a 5 3 2 for Osasuna. But, you know, a first half where the home side have dominated from the first minute to the last one with this man on fire, Ferran Torres as well. 
you know, 3 0 for, for Barcelona, it could have been more. So uh, let's see what Osasuna can do to, to change the fortunes of, of this game for them. Well, you got the impression that after the third goal, Barcelona took the foot off the accelerator a little bit. Uh, that won't be too much. Uh, that won't help the Osasuna mindset too much as they head back into the tunnel because there's 45 minutes and more to come from the Camp Nou, where the halftime score, as you can see, Barcelona three. Osasuna nil will be back in 12 minutes time. Microsoft helps bring new metrics to La Liga. Go deeper into the action to analyze and enjoy more of the game you love with Beyond Stats. It's your game. Not for persons under the age of 18. Enjoy Heineken responsibly. We've got you covered for all the soccer action. Best of all, it's data free on the GBETS app. GBETS, powered by Gold Rush. <clears throat> Were you expecting to find something in this fridge? Ha, <sighs> my boy. Try again later. Pizza. And a free drink, guys. Oh, is this what you were looking for? When you're looking for something more, get the triple decker plus a free 1.5 liter drink for just one sixty nine ninety. Debonair's Pizza. Try something amazing. This is El Clasico, the biggest rivalry in Spanish football. Yeah, a real live action figure. Great save from Ter Stegen. Well, there's one pull back from Aguero. Absolutely brilliant. Live La Liga through El Clasico. Real Madrid versus Barcelona on Supersport on DSTV. I am calling you out, Steve Austin. At WrestleMania, Stone Cold is going to open up Hannah Whoopass on you, Kevin Owens. Expect the unexpected on Raw. Persons under 18. It's soccer season and GBETS has it all. Enjoy over 400 ways to bet on every game, including first goal, number of goals, highest scoring player, and much more. You can even edit your bets for a wider spread and accumulate your bonus by placing multiple bets. Best of all, it's data free on the GBETS app. Find all the latest soccer action on GBETS, powered by Gold Rush. time at the camp now where Barcelona fans have enjoyed the opening 45 minutes of the final game of the day. Barca leading Osasuna by three goals to nil. It's been a very, very comfortable evening so far for Barcelona. Utterly dominant, Graham Hunter, so far. I think for any neutral watching, highly entertaining too. Um, it's not as if they're playing high-risk football. They're trying to put a chokehold on Osasuna and it's working to the extent 
that the men in green very rarely have lengthy possession and very rarely have quality possession, which means that they rush things, they make mistakes, and openings come for Barca. This is an example here. It's a lovely push ball through from Busquets. I know you have your doubts about this, and I think the majority will, because outside the box, it's a 50-50 challenge. But as the defender goes down, he just <laughs> maybe takes mm. Gabby down. Not for, not for me, Graham. But yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I think yours yeah. will be the majority view. What isn't in any doubt is that this player who's been lacking confidence and who departed the pitch in tears against Napoli after having missed chances. That's a very clinical finish. He takes a shade of uh, paint off the left-hand post. Never in any doubt what's happening. Kudos to him. And cute here. I mean, it looked like Danny Alves was going to um, shoot, but instead it was a nicely worked move with Piquet as the auxiliary centre forward. And there would be nobody more disappointed than, than Piquet, who loves a goal that Ferran Torres couldn't get in the end of that one. Yeah, uh, Ferran Torres uh, scoring the first and he's soon scored the second as well. We've mentioned it's really important for him to get his scoring boots on. It's really important for Ousmane Dembele as well uh, to be playing like this. It's a magnificent pass from him, a really cool finish from Ferran Torres and two players uh, combining uh, to score a really, really good goal. The thing I like about it to start with is Pedri um, letting Dembele come inside and therefore Osasuna are unsure who's marking them, they give him room to pick up this run and a little, look at that shuffle there, mm -hmm. left foot control, right foot finish. Some players can do that, not every player can do it and our commentator Simon called it right that he waited to see what Herrera was going to do and then just calmly nutmegged him. Mm. And then uh, we'll uh, see also a, a goal by Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as well. The third goal for uh, Barcelona, which is coming up in just a moment. He's someone who's uh, also hit the ground running for uh, Barcelona, perhaps more so, I think it's fair to say, then Ferran Torres. Five goals in six games in La Liga Santander for uh, Aubameyang, uh, reaching that tally pretty quickly, if you uh, think that sometimes it takes a while to adapt to a new team, to a, a new league as well. But Aubameyang is a born goal scorer. And that, he makes it look like a simple finish. That's a really good goal, though. Uh, greetings from Westphalia. They used to do this at Signal Aduna <laughs> Park for Borussia Dortmund. Uh, David Garcia doesn't see the run. I mean, what's really, really important is that Garcia is originally supposed to be picking up the Gabon striker. He makes a run that Dembele actually could hear. He could sense rather than even see. And it was just put on a Bamiyan's toe by Dembele, who's having a maybe one of his best games of the season. Really calm, used to the ball, lovely. Pedri's been super all night. The shot should have gone on target, but it means, for my taste, that one of the things that's important is that the two wide men, Torres and Dembele, are doing well, but Aubameyang is, Aubameyang is flanked by Pedri and Gab, um, uh, Gabri, who are doing really, really well. These are the match stats uh, underlining that dominance. Osasuna have had 28% possession and zero shots. Barcelona, 72% possession, uh, but they've managed 10 shots and four on target. Three of those have ended up in the back of the net. So far, so good for Barcelona. It's looking difficult for Osasuna to get back into this game. You've got the feeling there are more goals to come in the second half. New York City, so much more than a city, a way of life, the home of Cruz Vodka, where raw ingredients get distilled down to reach the top of the world, five times to be exact, that city that never sleeps, that vintage black, pure New York in a bottle, Cruz, vintage black. With the 4-3-3, they'll look to attack. An early goal will set the tone. The wing backs will stretch the defense. They will keep the momentum. They've considered in four of their last five. Their new signing is yet to score. They'll battle on the counter press. Their back line will be solid. They'll be caught on the break. It'll go down to the wire. This is why I bet. This is why I bet. This is why I bet. Betway. Live 
La Liga through Supersport, your home of unbeatable football, only on DSTV. Golden Gloves presents Heavyweight Mania live from Empress Palace. In the evening's main supporting bout, Joshua Pretorius will attempt to dethrone SA Heavyweight Champion John Rue. The main attraction sees former Cruiserweight World Champion Kevin Lorena make his heavyweight debut against hard-hitting Romanian Bogdan Dinu. Heavyweight Mania live on the 26th of March. Only on Supersport on DSTV. Proudly brought to you by Empress Palace and World Sports Betting. Nivea Men Black and White Dio with five times Dio action to protect you and your favorite gear from stains. Try SA's number one anti stain deodorant. Hollywood bets. Spin us all, gang. Take a spin with us. Royal Flush Gin, five times distilled, French luxury. Welcome back to the Camp Nou, where the home fans in this Barcelona Osasuna game, which concludes the weekend uh, weekend's football from match day 28 of La Liga Santander, are enjoying a placid 15-minute break. Andrea Orlandi 3-0 up and a truly dominant performance from Barcelona of the opening 45 minutes. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, it all started uh, quite early, uh, Simon. Uh, not only for Barcelona, but for Ferran mainly. Uh, you know, with an early run, uh, a penalty claim. We also, it wasn't a penalty, but you could see that, you know, Barcelona started on the front foot. And Osasuna couldn't really do anything against them. Uh, you know, defensively, I, th I think that the plan for Ayago Barrasate didn't work. Uh, Barcelona played Osasuna mainly on the right with Pedri, Alves, and, and Dembele, causing all sorts of problems. Dembele with two assists. I was looking at, at the second goal. Uh, you know how the build-up, how good it was, and the movement from Obama Young is actually, you know, creating the space for for Ferran Torres. Uh, David Garcia has to follow him. He drops deeper, so he plays Ferran Torres on the pass from Dembélé was sensational in the finish. Even better. So all good for Barcelona, as you said. You know when we went into halftime after scoring the third, they kind of, you know, took the foot off the pedal. Uh, but obviously, in the second 45 minutes, I expect them to come out strongly. Let's see what Osasuna can do to stop them. Jamie, any signs uh, over the half-time break as to what either of the managers uh, might be planning? And uh, tell us a little bit about the celebrations uh, going on out there on the pitch. Well, I expect a triple substitution from uh, Osasuna. I've seen Unai Garcia, Roberto Torres and Ari Dani especially warming up quite intensively during half-time. And I see also the fourth referee here preparing the board and we'll see who are the three players replaced for Osasuna. The atmosphere here at the Camp Nou, Simon, is one of those atmospheres of big nights as the local fans are pretty enjoying what has happened. But the attendance today is only 54,000 fans. OK, only 54,000 in the, the Camp Nou, but uh, those 54,000 souls, apart from the relative handful of Osasuna fans, enjoying the entertainment so far. Jamie warns us that a triple change is forthcoming. 
from Jacob Arrasate. Um, what do you think he'll have been telling his players, uh, Andre? Well, there's no much to say, really, Simon. When you're 3-0 down and you've been outplayed in every single department, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that he probably said, I, I would change at 11 <laughs> at the start of the game, so I can't do it. So, obviously, as, uh, as Jamie said, he's going he's gonna to make three substitutions, probably change the system, really. And, uh, and let's take the game, let's take the second half as a new game and try to win those uh, those 45 minutes and take some positives out of the game as we see two defenders coming on so probably we will go with five at the back plus the captain Roberto Torres okay so uh, Ruben Garcia will come off as will David Garcia who saw a yellow card and oh, Lucas yeah. Toro ah, Toro yeah so help me out here and uh, how's he gonna how's he gonna um, set them up obviously uh, now you've got Aridane, uh, Unai Garcia and Juan Cruz as, as three at the back uh, Moncayola uh, playing where Torro was Javi Martinez and Roberto Torres in midfield and two up front so it's gonna be a 5-3-2 for Osasuna, Nacho Vidal and, and Cote being the wingbacks obviously he's trying to reinforce that defensive line Simon because in the first half uh, you know they were put under pressure from Barcelona from the start and, and couldn't really do anything to stop them well uh, welcome touch for Ter Stegen who sends it long and uh, Ali Dani gets involved playing the ball back to Sergio Herrera and the problem with with playing with five at the back or three center back Simon is you're playing against a 4-3-3 so you can end up being in, in a 1v1 you know yeah uh, Dembele up against Juan Cruz you can see now that the Cote is, is risking so he's marking and pressing Dani Alves so he's leaving Juan Cruz on open uh, open space against Dembele that could be deadly Ferran Torres the by goal scorer in the first half, the third goal scored by Aubameyang. Yang. First goal, a penalty. Second two, both assisted by Usman Dembele. And there's Eric Garcia falling asleep a little bit. Gerard Piquet was there to cover and uh, just clipped the ball off the toes of Kiki Garcia. She played over the top. Out quickly to clear, but the flag and the first two up for offside. The first two Barcelona. Barcelona. Sorry, Simon. The first two Barcelona players warming up here on the sideline are Clement Langley and Memphis Depay. Thanks, Jamie. It's Pedri picking out Eric Garcia now. Jordi Alba. I would expect Clement Langley to come on for for Gerard Piquet. You know to. To rest him a little bit if the go if the game keeps going the way it's going at the minute for Barca. Obviously Memphis who scored twice with, with two shots in the last two games. He needs minutes. Clips over the top towards Garcia. Alba showing real calm and poise on the ball. Oh. Okay, not quite so much. And Ter Stegen forced out to make the block and that's rather fortunate to get away with a goal kick yeah absolutely Piquet just making a mess of it actually, maybe too relaxed you can see the kind of stumbles he doesn't know where the ball is Javi Martinez with a chance well saved by Ter Stegen blocking off access to the goal at the near post there Pedri look, looking round, hoping to hear a whistle for a free kick in his favour. It's not given, it's a throw to Osasuna. Nacho Vidal to put the ball back in play. It's too firm for Benito from Kiki Garcia. Obviously, Barca haven't really started the second half as they did in the first one. And Osasuna there. They're a bit more aggressive, you know, with or without the ball as Busquets gives a fair ball away once again. Hey. 
En Aridane es un importante player for yeah. Sassuolo, as there's a chance here. Obama Yang, that's really well defended by Vidal. I should say by uh, Unai Garcia. Wow. Debele. <laughs> and it's a block mixture of Herrera and Aridane who make the block. Yeah, but Dembele is unstoppable, Simon. Yeah, he's really on form tonight, isn't he? Unbelievable. It's Gaffi for Barcelona. One lovely ball to Dembele. He just miscued it. He goes out for a goal kick. Obviously, you know, he, he takes on two <laughs> Osasuna defenders and still get, gets past them. Finishes with his right, right foot. See, controlling in the box. He's got two players in front of him, so he doesn't really care. I think, yeah, maybe it's Sergio Herrera with the save. We see here. How can you stop that? Well, certainly, uh, Javi Martinez will be echoing your question, I think, <laughs> in his mind. Yeah, he was blocked by Aridane eventually. And Aridane hadn't played for 19 games, Simon. He, he came on against Villarreal for yeah. the first time after a long injury. He's, a, he's an important player for Sasuna. Ferran to Gavi. Back to Jordi Alba. That's a nice ball to Pedri. Pedri picking out Dembele in space. Dembele's cross, first time. And now Bama Yang on the half volley, on the half turn, going close to making it four. Well, now uh, Dembele receives the ball wide and he goes for a cross. You know, first touch cross with his right foot. Great ball into the penalty spot. Aubameyang, it's a great, offer, great effort as well. You know, because he's a balance with his body, a little bit back.
Lady Mara was so close. Are you hit six gallon a month? I don't pay it, Savannah, or Habibi. Rick, Rick, Rich, or Magic Mike. Honey, fall, leg, happy, hell to lock, leg, happy, and Ricky Gall. The back side, I got frozen weed. Don't sit side, my side get paid. She wanna get fucked by London, you, yes, right by the London. Marijuana, so taken to you. Well, these niggas ain't walking, they all for sale. Yeah. My bitch, she clutch because she a nerd. Whenever I'm down, she give me a part. The police pull up, my gun in my purse. The drugs pull up, the hell on the street.
and to talk about Mohamed Salah is one of the best players in the world uh, in the sixth final finalist in in the list of the Global Soccer Awards he scored a lot of goals for Liverpool he made the difference I love to watch him play so he's a great player Maybe if Neymar was at Bayern Munich five years ago, he would have fought four Ballon d'Ors. Mm -hmm. Possibility. <laughs> Schultz, the crowd shout, shoot! Now, Gnabry, there's no keeper, it's Corentin Tony Sol to make it four, but he hasn't. Hey Ross, are you hit six gallon a month? Barcelona, my friend, my friend, Barcelona is finished. You are gone, Messi is gone, everyone is gone from the club, so... Nigerian hammer criteria compared to your career. This isn't better. I ain't got time. Where my second minutes, I was going to the O. Mighty dollar in the O. Yeah, motherfucker, you heard what I just I'm said. Just a regular, everyday, normal motherfucker. I don't like margarine, I much prefer the taste of butter.
देखो ना ये क्या हो गया तुम्हारा हूँ मैं और तुम मेरी मैं हैरान हूँ तुम ही क्या कहो कि दिन भी हो कैसे चांदनी जागी जागी सी है फिर भी खाबों में है
घड़ी बदल रही है रूप जिंदगी छाव है कभी कभी है धूप जिंदगी हर पल यहाँ जी भर जियो जो है समा कल हो न हो हर घड़ी बदल रही है रूप जिंदगी छाव है कभी कभी है धूप जिंदगी हर पल यहाँ किस ओर चला है तू क्या पाया नहीं तूने क्या ढूंढ रहा है तू जो है अन कही जो है अन सुने वो बात क्या है बता मित और चला है तू क्या पाया नहीं तूने क्या ढूंढ रहा है तू जो है अन कही जो है अन सुने वो बात क्या है बता मितवा कहें धड़कने तुझसे क्या
जानम देख लो मिट गई दूरियाँ मैं यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ जानम देख लो मिट गई दूरियाँ मैं यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ कैसी सरहदें कैसी मजबूरियाँ मैं यहाँ सकोगे मैं वो राज हूँ तुम भुला ना सकोगे वो अंदाज हूँ गूंजता हूँ जो दिल में तो है रहो क्यों मैं तुम्हारे ही दिल की तो आवाज हूँ सुन सको तो सुनो की जबान मैं यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ कैसी सरहदें कैसी मजबूरियाँ मैं यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ हूँ यहाँ
बदल रही है रूप जिंदगी छाव है कभी कभी है धूप जिंदगी 
हर पल यहाँ जी भर जियो जो है समा मुश्क शवा खुश आम दीदे मर हवा इश्क शवा मुश्क शवा
धूप से निकल के छाव से फिसल के हम मिले जहाँ पर लम्हा थम गया जनम 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 साथ चलना यूं कसम तुम्हें कसम माँ के मिलना यही एक जहाँ है भले दो बदन हो जुदा मेरी हो के हमेशा ही रहना कभी ना कहना अलविदा मेरी सुबह हो तुम्हें और तुम्हें शाम बहुत मजा आया होगा है ना बहुत मजा आया होगा मेरा दिल तोड़ के छह दिन लड़की इन वाह तुम दोनों को तो अवार्ड मिलना चाहिए फैंटेस्टिक रूट फैंटेस्टिक लिसन प्लीज लिसन टू मी यार नो यू लिसन टू मी मैंने तुम्हें अपना दोस्त समझ के अपनी दिल की बात कही और तुमने क्या किया इसे जाके सब कुछ बता दिया और ये ये जो सबका भगवान बनना चाहता है इसने सोचा मैं नैना से प्यार तो नहीं कर सकता मगर उसे प्यार ढूंढ के तो ला सकता हूं इसने जाके तुम्हारा दरवाजा खटखटाया और कहा रोहित तुम्हारी ये दोस्ती दोस्ती नहीं प्यार है और तुम मान गए रोहित कैसे आदमी हो तुम कैसे आदमी हो तुम जो अपनी दिल की बात नहीं समझ सकते मैं, अपनी दिल की बात नहीं जान सकते प्यार करता हूं नैना और ये सच है नो no, ये सच नहीं है ये सच नहीं है सच ये है कि तुमने मेरा दिल तोड़ा है मेरा दिल दुखाया है मैं जानती हूं कि पहले मेरी जिंदगी में मुस्कुराहट नहीं थी खुशी नहीं थी पर एक दोस्त तो था आज तुमने मेरा वो दोस्त भी ले लिया तुम दोनों ने कुछ सुनना नहीं चाहती कुछ समझना नहीं चाहती भगवान के लिए मुझे छोड़ दो नैना काश मैं तुम्हें बता सकता मैं तुम्हें कितना चाहता हूं वन सेकेंड वेट आई लव यू आई लव आई लव यू आई लव यू वेरी वेरी मच नैना और लिखा है I love you and and मैं आंखें बंद करता हूं तो तुम्हें देखता आंखें खोलता हूं तो तुम्हें देखना चाहता हूं तुम पास नहीं होती तो तुम्हें चारों तरफ महसूस करता हूं हर पल हर घड़ी हर वक्त मेरे नैना मेरी नैना को ढूंढते इसे प्यार का हो पागलपन या मेरे दिल की धड़कन मेरी एक ही बात है प्यार तो बहुत लोग करते हैं लेकिन मेरे जैसा प्यार कोई नहीं कर सकता क्योंकि किसी के पास तुम जो नहीं हो मैं तुम्हें भूल नहीं सकता नैना मैं तुम्हें मैं तुम्हें भूलना ही नहीं चाहता तुम मेरी हो मैं तुम्हें जिंदगी भर प्यार करूंगा और मरते दम तक प्यार करूंगा के बाद ये ये सब लिखा है उसने इस डायरी में रोहित रोहित दिल कैसे दुखा सकते और 
कितनी खराब हैंड राइटिंग है तुम्हारी है जिसका निशान कल हो न हो हर पल यहां जी भर जियो जो है समा कल हो न हो तुमको भी है खबर मुझको भी है पता हो रहा है जुदा दोनों का रास्ता दूर जाके भी मुझसे यादों में रहना कभी अलविदा न कहना कभी अलविदा न कहना कभी अलविदा न कहना My name is Maya. जितनी थी खुशियाँ सब खो चुकी हैं बस एक गम है कि जाता नहीं समझा के देखा बहला के देखा दिल है कि चैन इसको आता नहीं आता नहीं
कभी अलविदा ना कहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना जा रही है दर्द का मौसम बदला नहीं रंग ये हम का इतना है गहरा सदियों भी होगा नहीं हल्का नहीं कौन जाने क्या होना है अब क्या क्या सहना कभी अलविदा कभी अलविदा ना कहना को भी है पता हो रहा है जुदा दोनों का रास्ता दूर जाके भी मुझसे तुम मेरी यादों में रहना
जाता है कोई क्यों सपनों को ठुकरा के पाएगा ये दिल क्या किसी को बता के चलते चलते राख हम बिन चले उसको कह दू अभी जाओ
लहराई पैगाम वफा के लाई तूने अच्छी प्रीतन भाई तूने अच्छी प्रीतन भाई किसी से अब क्या कहना तुझे याद न मेरी आई किसी से अब क्या कहना तुझे याद न मेरी आई किसी से अब क्या कहना
عمري ولا بريد ما حد يقدر لي هاي والله انه اسطوره ولك يلا عن شرفك يا ابن और आशु लॉकडाउन में क्या टाइम पास कर रहा है भाई मेरे को बहुत मजा आ रहा है यार मैं घर बैठे बैठे जो मतलब अपना घर एक्सप्लोर किया है ना तेरे को पता है मेरे घर पे 370 टाइल 100 चम्मच 50 कांटे 25 ड्रॉर 6 दरवाजे और एक पागल बहन है अरे वाह इतनी वैल्यूएबल इंफॉर्मेशन और क्या-क्या किया आपने आशीष सर मैंने बहुत चीजें की टेरेस पे ट्रैकिंग गार्डन में जॉगिंग सही है बेटा और तो और मैं ऊपर गया था मैंने ऊपर वाली अलमारी खुली तो दो चूहे दिखे मेरे को अभी हम तीनों बहुत अच्छे दोस्त हैं पांक काफी गहरी फ्रेंडशिप हो गई हमारी लेकिन वो क्या है ना वो दोनों चूहे कपल है तो मेरे को कभी-कभी लगता है मैं उनकी प्राइवेसी डिस्टर्ब कर रहा हूं अबे ओ लगता है क्वारंटाइन में घर बैठ बैठ के ना तू पागल हो चुका है नहीं नहीं मैं पागल नहीं हो रहा हूं मेरे को बहुत मजा आ रहा है घर पे भाई तेरे को पता है मेरे साथ घर पे और भी लोग रह रहे हैं कौन लोग तेरे साथ रह रहे हैं भाई वही जिनको हम प्यार से मां-बाप बुलाते अभी कितनी मेरे को कितनी भी गालियां देते हो कितने भी ताने मारते हो मैं प्यार करता हूं उनसे बस जब भी अपने रूम से बाहर निकलता हूं मेरे को देखते अपने बाल नोचना चालू हो जाते हैं बहुत गालियां और ताने देते इतने गालियां और ताने देते मेरे को तो लगता है गवर्नमेंट मेरे घर में लॉकडाउन घोषित कर देगी कि हॉल में ना 3 से ज्यादा लोग इकट्ठा नहीं हो सकते
अरे यार जादू मैं तेरे को एक मेन बात बता रहा भूल गया यार मेरी वो क्रश है ना कौन सी दुनिया की हर जिंदा लड़की में तो तेरे को क्रश है ही अबे सिमरन यार उसने मेरे को बोला आज हम वीडियो कॉल पे बात करते हैं यार वो मेरे को पक्का पसंद करती है इसलिए वो वीडियो कॉल पे बात करना चाहती है बेटा बोर हो गई होगी वो घर पे तू है ना उसका लास्ट ऑप्शन है इसलिए तुझसे बात कर रही वीडियो कॉल पे यार जादू पक्का मत यार मैं जा रहा हूँ अभी से वीडियो कॉल पे बात करने चल मैं बाद में बात करता हूँ अरे वाह ये मैं क्या देख रहा हूँ ये प्राणी अपने बिल से बाहर भी निकलता है तो आज के डिस्कवरी एपिसोड में हमको पता चला ये जानवर अपने बिल से बाहर भी निकलता है आ अरे लाल बैठ जा बैठ जा क्या बात है बेटा हमको सिखा ना क्या यही बेटा कि एक जगह पे बारह बारह घंटे फालतू कैसे बैठा जाता है मेरे को सिखा ना बेटा <laughs> क्या मैं काम करने वाला आदमी और मैं तो तेरी तरह फालतू हूं नहीं तो मेरे को सिखा ना अभी क्या लॉकडाउन हो चुका है तो मेरे ख्याल से पूरे घर को तेरे से फालतू बने की ना कोचिंग लेनी चाहिए <laughs> मैंने किसी को तो कहा था कि डॉक्टर बन जा डॉक्टर बन जा लेकिन वो क्या बना यूट्यूबर अरे यार फिर से चालू हो गया इनका बाहर जाके पूछा तेरा ये YouTube YouTube कुछ काम आया लोगों के हाँ पप्पा यार डॉक्टर बनता तो कम से कम काम आता इस वायरस को मारने में मदद करता अभी कैसे मारेगा सब्सक्राइबर फेंक के मारेगा हाँ सिल्वर प्ले बटन लेके वायरस का मर्डर करने जाएगा What? कम से कम डॉक्टर बनता तो वतन के काम आता अभी बस बर्तन के काम आ रहे वो भी खाने में धोने में नहीं अच्छा आप तो ऐसे बात करो जैसे आपके पास सात सात डिग्री है डॉक्टर की हाँ तो क्या हो गया अगर मैं डॉक्टर नहीं हूँ मेरे पास कुछ नुस्खे है इस वायरस को भगाने के लिए उधर पूरी दुनिया इस बीमारी का इलाज ढूंढ रही है और आपके पास नुस्खे कहाँ से आए आपको ये नुस्खे व्हाट्सएप पे फॉरवर्ड आया मेरे को यार इनका व्हाट्सएप बंद करवाओ कोई छचुंदर का मूत घोड़े की टट्टी और कुत्ते का शुक्रानु मिला के अगर इंसान सूंघ ले तो उसको यह वायरस कभी नहीं पकड़ता अरे वो पप्पा ये सब सुनने से इंसान ऐसे ही मर जाएगा वायरस की जरूरत क्या है ओह नो पापा प्लीज व्हाट्सएप के फॉरवर्डेड मैसेजेस को विश्वास मत किया करो ये सब फेक होता है मसाला बनाने के लिए कुछ भी भेजते रहते हैं लोग आप पागल हो गए यार अच्छा कम से कम ये तो मानता है कि अगर तू बाहर निकल के सत्संग पे एकजुट होके इकट्ठा होके अगर सबके साथ प्रार्थना करेगा तो ये वायरस भाग जाएगा अरे ओ पप्पा आपने सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का नाम सुना है ये बाहर जाके इकट्ठा होने से बीमारी और फैलेगी हमको क्राउड नहीं करना है घर पे ही रहना है और अगर आपको प्रे करना है तो घर पे रह के प्रे करो ना एक खास बाहर जाके क्यों प्रे करना है और पापा वो वायरस है विक्रम भट्ट की पिक्चर का भूत नहीं है सब इकट्ठा होकर प्रे करेंगे भग जाएगा अरे बेटा जब हम तुम्हारी उम्र के थे तब हम तुलसी चाट चाट के वायरस को भगाते थे ये तुलसी कौन है हराम खोर पत्ते की बात कर रहा हूँ तुलसी के पत्ते की बात कर रहा हूँ और उसके बाद अपने आप को शुद्ध करने के लिए हम बांसुरी बजाते थे अब ये बांसुरी कौन है फैन के टक्के बांसुरी फ्लूट की बात कर रहा हूँ डंडे की अरे बेटा जब हम तुम्हारी उम्र के थे हाँ पप्पा पता है जब आप हमारी उम्र के थे तब आप बैटमैन की नाजायज औलाद थे आप तो मार्स पे होते थे मम्मी अर्थ पे होती थी और आप वॉक